when this game first came out somewhere in the world, someone's head exploded from seeing the Nintendo and Sega logos on the same screen. Anyway, I'm OC Trinity. Maybe you remember me from last time. Join us, and let's play F-Zero GX. Now, for anyone who has not heard of this game, probably you have heard of Captain Falcon, you know, from Super Smash Bros. Falcon Punch? Yeah, that guy. And you probably know this, that's him in that uh, blue vehicle there, the one the camera seems to be unable to get a decent uh, view on. As you can probably also tell, this is a futuristic racing game, one that we're going to jump into here, see what it's all about. You know, explore the uh, origins of one of our favorite characters. Now, we're not going to mess around and go straight for the hardest difficulty here. There are 41 total uh, vehicles here, but for the sake of uh, familiarity, I'll pick the one you guys probably know. So, our first track, Mute City, really doesn't have that much craziness going. Sort of just a vaguely figure eight-ish track there, with a little bit of a spin in the middle, or towards the end. Now, between each track, I'm allowed to change my character's, my vehicle's acceleration or max speed, slide it to one side or the other. Usually, I play most of these towards two or three units on the max speed side, depending on how crazy the track is. So here we'll go around there. Additionally, each character is ranked in a few other parameters. Body, which uh, it determines how well it withstands collisions. Boost ha determines how strong your turbo boosts are. And grip is basically a maneuverability thing on how well it hugs uh, curves. There's also weight. That changes uh, heavier, cur heavier cars withstand collisions better and have better top speed, whereas lighter cars are a little more agile and have better acceleration. Now, as you can tell here, those yellow things are, tur are turbo boosts. What I just drove through restores my energy, which is on the top right side of your screen. And in addition to having these turbo boosts, I can manually do a turbo boost anytime after the second, and, during the second and third lap. So right now, energy for the turbo boost, though, is the same energy that comes out of when I actually collide with uh, other vehicles or walls. So a lot of the strategy here is going to come down to knowing when to boost, when to hold up, and when to hold off. We're already in our final lap here. As you can tell, this game don't, doesn't pull any punches when it comes to overall speed here. Probably one of the faster um, games on the market. When it came out, at least. Maybe still is, I don't know. Of course, the end of this pretty much is going to come down to mashing the uh, Y button to do lots of turbo boosts at the end. Now, we came in fifth place out of 30. There's not a minimum requirement in terms of how well we need to finish. Of course, there is a point system based on how well you do, and it definitely favors finishing in the top 10 or so. In this case, I score 76 points, and to put that into perspective, the winner there would get uh, 100 points. 30th place gets 15. So, definitely have to finish like, uh, in the front of the pack. Casino Palace is our next track here, which is almost a straight line completely like, completely a straight line. Most of the tracks here don't really take much, uh, gravity into consideration. Something about G-Diffuser systems that, uh, the manual tries to explain, but I kind of skipped over. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I probably shouldn't let my, uh, co-workers know that I played this, uh, track. Yeah, that's a little now. So I've adjusted my max speed a little more in that direction, just because I have so few turns I actually need to deal with. There's a split right around here on the track. One side has the energy, one side just has more turbo boosts. So later on in the uh, on the second and third lap, I definitely want to go more for the energy, just want to use more of my own boosts. Here's my chance to catch up now that I can just... Pretty much just uh, stack the next turbo boost right when the last one runs out. That's pretty much all you need to do here. Let's still go a little bit further than that. 
to hold off just a little bit. My energy's looking a little bit low. There we go. Alright, now we can pretty much just mash the Y button as needed. Let's do the same thing. That should be enough for a first place finish. There we go. For the curious, that's the only time the announcer does anything more unusual than just announcing which uh, position you got. So where does that put us in terms of the standings? Right on top, and by a very wide margin. Wow. Yeah, I thought we weren't going to talk about that. Uh, anyway. Sand Ocean is our next track. You know, I think I might have hit max speed a little more than I should have there, but we'll get by that without it. So, Sand Ocean being a desert, not that that changes anything. I mean, there's a lot of uh, turns towards the second half of it, most of which I just do drifts through. But apart from that, it's not that complex of a track, especially compared to what we're going to see later on. Surprisingly, the, one of the harder parts here that throws a lot of early players for a loop is that jump I just did, because if you fall off the track, you are done. Completely. No chance to recover. Or actually, to be more specific, there is a life system, and you can see how many lives I have on the bottom left corner of the screen. Just underneath 6th place there. Yeah, Master Difficulty doesn't give me much uh, leeway in terms of that. You can get extra lives by crashing, getting other uh, vehicles to crash, though. You can kill 5 in a single race, that's good enough for an extra life. Something I don't put a lot of emphasis on, really. Even though I probably should. Like that. You'll see a skull on the uh, next the time to signify that I actually did that. I don't know if that guy I killed was anything uh, I should worry about or not. Now, for a lot of these turns, I'm holding both shoulder buttons to drift through. I feel like I lose a little bit of... Uh, it feels like the vehicle's going to skid out some that way, but it actually works fairly well for those kinds of turns. And I can also do uh, just hold one shoulder button to do sharper turns, but I do lose a lot of speed doing that. I'm running out of energy, so I'm going to have to let some of these pass me and catch back up later. I wish that working a little better than it did. I uh, lost a little too much ground there. I wonder how well I can make this up. For this part, I probably just want to hug this curve here do as little uh, actual turning as possible. Here's my chance to catch up. Not quite as uh, well as I was hoping, but as long as I place with the top 10 each time, I should be happy, and I think I'm still going to be in the lead after that. Well, I am in the lead, but not nearly by as much. I've got a 38-point lead on second place. So let's go on to the next one. Our next track is called Lightning, you know, the same as the uh, main character in a mediocre Final Fantasy game, and it has a bunch of loops to it. And it looks a little more complicated from the diagram than it actually is. We'll go around 2.5 for the um, mac on the max speed side this time. So it looks like the track mirrors each other a little bit, so you can kind of see the uh, developer's disregard for gravity here. And the weird track design you can kind of attribute to the fact that the developers on this game are actually the same development team that worked on Super Monkey Ball. Which, for anyone not familiar with that, is basically a new, evolved version of Marble Madness. For anyone who remembers that. Old school gamers like us unite. Now, I find, I find that if you're in a uh, large pack like that, doing a spin attack really helps you clear out the crowd. Not, won't usually get you a kill. I feel like I got lucky that time. Uh, 
Alright, let's try and eliminate our rival like that. Give ourselves a little more leeway. Since I killed off my rival, the next closest rival gets the mark there. It's probably easier to get kills like this when everybody's going around the same speed. You're, like, right next to that. Uh, right next to that. Alright, let's get towards the beginning of the pack. Here we go. More drift turns here. Not quite working as well. Alright, back to maximum energy. We lost a lot of momentum that way, so let's see what we can do to catch back up. Sometimes going at the speed you're going, it's a little hard to really tell where the other cars are. I'm mostly using just the, uh, the white lights from coming from the engine as a point of reference more than anything else here. Yeah, Alright, last lap. It's all because the uh, music picked up in intensity, which it will always do. Did you notice that yet? Ooh, that was a close call running into the uh, guy spinning like that. We're right back to have the same position we were in the last lap. Of course, I can afford to expend a little more energy this time, so that might work out in the end anyway. Or it might not. Well, the end of that didn't quite go as planned. I I think I still finished in front of my rival, so if nothing else, then I still, uh... Anyone else that's gonna catch up still is, might have it a little bit. Oh, it looks like we did just fine. Alright. So we've got a 32-point lead. So pretty much if we finish within this top five on the next track, we should be totally good to go. Next track is actually fairly difficult considering this is a first cup. I like to think of it as our uh, graduating exam for the rest of the game. I think that same uh, level on max speed should be enough. So Aeropolis Multiplex is going to give us a little bit of everything. A few jumps off the level, a few U-turns, unusual drift curves. It's actually long enough that we actually hit the two energy zones. jump off to the right there, which doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to take right now. Get a minor shortcut if I got turbo boost. Minor just being that I skip out on the turn. And still land on pretty much the same part of the track. This game doesn't really have that much in the way of shortcuts like that. Alright, so we're about halfway done the uh, first lap here. The uh, brown stuff part there is basically dirt. We'll drive a little slower through here, so now we have to pretty much weave through this in order to hit the turbo boosts. There are mines here, which I actually am going to hit because I do get, I mean, as much as I take a damage hit from them, first I'm going to be able to recover it right there, and second, I do get a considerable speed boost just for running into them. So, I think taking a jump like that simplifies things a lot, so it's... If I only need to use one turbo boost to get it, it seems worth it to me. I, I cut that a little too wide. I didn't lose too much from it. Try to stay in that uh, energy zone for as much time as possible, especially if I'm still turbo boosting. Here, of course, I could use a turbo boost to make up for missing a uh, dash zone if I wanted to. Now I definitely want to avoid the mines because I'm probably just going to use the uh, turbo boost for a more reliable speed boost. So those are good for the first lap, but not too much else. Alright, last lap. Considering I won the top five, I seem to be doing just fine on that. Alright, let's see if we can get into first place. There we go. But Probably not right now. And there they go. Oh, 
must have to adjust to the other uh, dash zone right away there. Ooh, that's going to make me lose a little bit of uh, speed, but uh, here we're getting it back. It looks like the other cars towards the beginning are probably hurting on energy right now, so I should have... Whoa! Well, I stay on there! Alright, return to normal temperature. Let's... Alright, there we go, there we go. Not top five, but, uh... I don't know, is that gonna be enough? I didn't see my rival anywhere there, so I'm probably okay. Unless one of those was, like, third or fourth. And we have... Successfully finished with the somehow we're in even better shape. Awesome! Finally got this done. Yeah, I I, I thought we said we weren't going to talk about that. Huh, doesn't matter. So yeah, we get this once it loads. There we go. We get this victory celebration, consisting entirely of just a victory lap around Butte City here. We'll go through my, uh, how well I did on everything here. Rank, time, best lap, max speed, total points, and how many, uh, how many kills I got. I don't think I got too many, but just one there, and I think two on the next track, right? Well, I don't know, you're the one keeping the kill count, right, Captain Guy? Huh? Looks like I was right. I did not too well there, but we'll get back about that. This victory celebration doesn't change too much, regardless of the track or anything, so I'll probably edit out the next ones. What we will get, though, that uh, after the actual victory lap, then we actually get the guys on the podiums here. Along with everybody else. Which, in my opinion, it looks like a bunch of superhero and supervillain rejects. Yeah, the... The cast of characters in this game is an eclectic one. Eclectic. I think that's the best way to describe that. We also get a chance to interview our guy. Yes, I'm not making this up. Apparently, F-Zero races are such a big deal here that they have a uh, cable station dedicated directly to them. F-Zero TV. Yeah, if only uh, you got stuff like that. The Golf Channel does not count. F-Zero TV, who has brought you heated race after heated race, will now present an interview with the champion. Okay, then. I'd like to ask you something. Okay. Uh, what do we want to ask? I want to be a racer like you. Hmm, you're quite sharp, aren't you? You'd make a good racer. No, Thank you, you for the interview. And that's all for Adrenaline Driven Wait, that's, that's the entire TV. interview? That's it, everyone. That doesn't count. We'll see you at the next Grand Prix. That's, that's a question, not an interview. And actually, the um, cha questions change depending on which difficulty you're on, too. So to get the full interview out of all the questions, you're going to have to finish this a lot. If you do it on Master Difficulty, you'll get this short video, too. Depending on your character. Most of which are pretty dumb, really. Yes, he has to do his heroic pose. Well, he rescued the baby and... split his pants. Wait, does everybody dress like that in this world? 26th century fashion makes no sense. None at all. Beyond that, it just gives you a bunch of stills of your uh, vehicle, which, honestly, I don't find all that interesting. I actually like the music more, which is actually a remix of the uh, records screen from the original F-Zero on SNES. Game that honestly plays nothing like this one. Hey, we didn't come here to watch credits. We came here to watch more races. So let's do the next one.